So we're here at the Computex 2011 here for Fandroid.com. And uh, this is the first time we see Honeycomb on the Intel powered tablet. That's correct. So what I have here is we have one of our Oak Trail based Intel systems. And this system is running Android Honeycomb on the system. So you click, you can see all of your apps. You have things like your browser, which will launch. You have your home screen to go back. Um, you can navigate through your different interfaces. You can see the widgets are there. You can add more widgets if you want. And we have several of the Google mobile services already enabled. You have the pictures as well, so you can load up things like uh, Crater Lake, which is a, a really scenic site based in Oregon. You've got the pinch and the zoom already working for it. So dual, dual touch, uh, yeah. multi-touch work, works fine. Correct. So what is the CPU in here? Uh, it's an Intel Atom processor. I don't know the specifics of it. Um, we're just trying to show Intel can run on, or Android can run on Intel IA. So with an Intel architecture, not only can you run Android, you can run Windows 7, and you can run Vigo. And so that's what we're trying to show with these demo booths. This is our, our Green Ridge, Ridge, what does that mean? Green Ridge is a code name for uh, the tablet. Is that like a ad for the, all the tablets or just for this no, one? just for this one. This is a development platform. Hi, buddy. And this one is? What is this one? Uh, this one is, I'm not sure what this, this one is. This, this, is, is this, uh, this is running a different version of uh, Android. I think it's 2.3. So this is Foxconn F150. All right. And then we have. So uh, right here, it seems that the 2.3 is smoother. Does that mean the Honeycomb still needs uh, hardware acceleration? Yeah, into it, it does. We actually just started porting only a few weeks ago. So we just got the signs of life. and. Uh, we feel comfortable with the performance without any of the optimizations. So, so when, you, when you start using the optimization, you will use the graphics kind of the part, the CPU to accelerate things? Um, of course, we're going to use the, the built-in graphics engine to the processor. Right. And uh, so basically, the full Honeycomb is going to be an Intel. And Intel is going to shrink the size of the CPU and shrink the power consumption. And what is the battery life going to be? Um, I can't speak to the battery life. I'm the software guy. Sorry. Okay. So what have you been doing as a software guy? So as a software guy, we've been getting, we've been trying to get Honeycomb ported to run on Intel architecture. So previously, Intel Honeycomb did not run on IA. Now it does, and we just got it running a few weeks ago. So that's what we're trying to show right now. 3.0. Yes. How about 3.1? Is that uh, going to help things in the Intel part as well? Yeah, it will. It will run on Intel as well. We'll so have that ported over. So basically the code was originally optimized for the ARM processor, right? Correct. So how do you take that and use it on the Intel? Well, do you so, emulate anything? Um, I can't speak to each of the specific optimizations, but what we do is we'll take each of the drivers and we'll optimize them to work with our processor. All right. Hmm. And, and uh, so, do you see this is a Qantas system running Quanta? Honeycomb? Qantas is like one of the biggest manufacturers. Here in Taiwan. Yes. So this is why you launch in Taiwan because every, all the tablets are made, uh, designed here, kind of. Well, it's, I think it's a timing thing too. Computex is right now, and we've been working to port Honeycomb over to Computex so we could show it that we're making progress. So you uh, didn't have sleep very much the last few weeks. I have not slept very much at all. Okay. How, how big is the team to make Honeycomb work? Is that a secret? Um, I don't know specifically. It's different places at Intel. But it, it, you, you can't really say there's one team because. Um, Honeycomb is based off of the Linux kernel, so we have a, a really large Linux team at Intel. Intel is one of the largest contributors to the Linux kernel. We have many kernel maintainers that work for Intel. So a lot of that work gets drafted into Honeycomb, so that's one of the reasons why we can make these optimizations. So the work that you do in Linux is used in the Ubuntu people and the Migo right. platform and the Android, everything is sharing the same code. Correct. So our goal is to take the optimizations for Intel IA, upstream them to the kernel. Intel has a very strong philosophy of making sure that the Linux kernel has the latest patches. And for Migo, for example, we always take the latest kernel for using our Migo releases. All right. Can we check a little bit more? What is this one? Uh, carrot. What is a carrot? Uh, it's a code name, and I can't speak to this one. This is not my uh, system. Not your system. But it, there's also some uh, honeycomb going on here. Is that honeycomb? I think it is. 3.0. Yes. All right. And this is the design right here. How soon are they, uh, the official announcement? When is it supposed to release all these? 
Well, we're announcing a copy tax that we've got Honeycomb ported over, and we're working with different OEMs to get Honeycomb designs on IA into the market. I, I can't provide a specific time. All right. The, the prices would have to be uh, competitive with the on part solutions, and the battery life needs to be at least as good and stuff like that, right? Uh, Eventually, and the, the weight and all that. Who I would say that, that Intel has unique advantages with our processor technology that we can bring. Yeah. Um, what kind of thing could you do on top of Android to like really take care of the, all these power performance things that Intel talks about? Intel says they have more performance, yeah. so you would need something on top, kind of, like more stuff, like crazy applications, more advanced applications. Is that part of your planning? So I can't speak to that. That's that's getting beyond my scope of expertise. Sorry. Like in theory, you could have video editing and advanced things like using the local CPU to do more advanced things than the basic Android apps and uh, more well, native code stuff. I mean, in theory, you could use some of the Intel IA extensions. I don't know if we're going to or not. I, honestly, I don't know what limitations we have on Honeycomb, what, what we can and can't use and yeah. introduce into the operating system. Do you know if the native code uh, apps in Android uh, work fine on, the, on Intel the same way as they do in the ARM? So about the NDK? Yeah. Oh, we're still porting those over. Porting. So how does that work? Um, we, we still have to work on getting the NDK optimized so that we can run apps natively. So does that mean that the NDK apps will somehow work on both automatically? Or you might need to make an NDK for ARM and an NDK app for Intel, and there might be different apps? Um, I don't know what our strategy is for that. Uh, okay. I think that you could probably support emulation, but I, I don't know. I'm not doing the porting to NDK, so don't take that as the... And let's take an overview of the, the Migo. Uh, so you're showing a whole range of Migo? And so what's, what's special about this OS? So Migo is, is just a, sort of a, we like to think of as a third alternative. Um, Intel has a port of choice strategy to optimize uh, Migo, Android, and Windows all run in IA. Um, what do you say IA? What does Intel that mean? architecture. In, oh, yeah, okay. It's, it's yeah. a code name that we use inside right. of Intel. Intel okay. IA, Intel architecture. So, so Migo is, is it's, a, it's an open, completely open source OS. I'm proud of you. You went for the cat. Everybody else goes for the girls. Yeah, just the cat is fine. Yeah. Here's some more cats. Is it a multi touch here? Um, no. As a cat video. Yes. That's nice. So the cat videos work on Migo. The cat and videos work on Migo. Yeah. So this Migo has a different interface. This is sort of our, our what we call the panel. Google uses their widgets. Um, Apple has their icons. We have icons as well, but we also have panels that can bring their important content up front. You can have Facebook integration, your latest music, photos, your, your videos, and personal browse. But in addition, if you uh, if you go back this way, you can uh, see also the icons for the applications that have been installed for Migo. This looks similar to Android here. It, it, it is. But Migo, is, since it is open, it's very highly customizable. Okay. So this is an example of the open source Migo UX. If you go to Migo.com, you can actually download and install this on a PC right now. Yeah. It um, runs on ARM as well, yeah, I guess. Uh, yes, Migo can support ARM. Yeah. This is an example of uh, CS2C operating system, which is a company in China. This is their customized version of Migo that they're porting over right now. The performance is not finalized yet. We're showing some of the alpha version of the software. And uh, this is a WeTab, which is a, a sh actually a shipping product of Migo. This one's shipping since uh, last year, and you can use this interface to uh, slide up and down. So you can see how Migo can be very customized. Nice. So if, if an OEM or ODM or a service provider wanted to have their own sort of interface, they can take the open source Migo and customize it as they want. All right. So that's it. Intel is supporting everything. We, that's our goal. Is is, is is we love everybody. If you want to get the gigs away, please raise your hand and answer me. Only one answer. Intel, okay. 来，请问看，你知道所在台湾是哪一家？ Intel, okay. 好的。那么再来呢，我还要再问一下。我们现在来送点不一样的。好的，这个是什么呢？想要赠品的话，赶快往前站，因为这个我没办法用抛的，一抛会打，把大家打头破血流。这个是我们手摇式的手电。